Hello students. Well, if you have been invited to view this video and not because you stumble on it by chance, you are probably uh, enrolled in a mathematics class with me, right? So welcome to my math class. Now, this video is meant uh, as an introduction. So let's begin. Let's do a self introduction. My name is uh, Mr. Raymond Cheng, right? So my surname is Cheng. How to pronounce it properly? Well, the NG at the back is pronounced as N, which is quite familiar to people here in Singapore. So you just have to add a C sound in front, so chunk. Well, just try your best. If you get it wrong, I won't blame you. But yeah, hope we get to know each other uh, and you know, a little better over the year. So welcome to this academic year. Now, what am I going to do in this video? I'm going to share with you a couple of things. Uh, firstly, is the mindset that I wish all my students to have as uh, they approach the learning of mathematics and learning in general. You know, as we go on this wonderful journey to explore and learn and discover the magic of mathematics. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to have some fun and going to learn together. Right? Uh, but we need to have the correct mindset to begin. So what are some of the things I'm looking out for? Allow me to share them with you. So you can see here on the screen, um, my name, C-H-N-G. I'm going to use them as a guide. And we know that in mathematics, sometimes we talk about positive, sometimes we talk about negatives, right? So we have some positive words here and some negative words here, right? So um, what are they? Let me go into a little more uh, details. So the first one is carry. I'm sure um, people of your generation, okay, younger than me, uh, probably uh, will not be unfamiliar with these words. Uh, so what is carry, right? So let me say this. Huh? If you need to carry your friends, then just carry, right? Those who do more, eventually grow more besides it is an opportunity to flex your capabilities so what what do i mean by this you are here to learn right so if the objective is to learn then it is actually counterproductive to be too calculative <laughs> right so interesting huh? as a math teacher i tell you don't be calculative okay so don't do that uh, what I mean is this, we are going to work in groups and in teams quite often. And when that happens, sometimes distribution of work cannot be even. And if you come to a situation where you realize, hey, you are doing more than others, just be happy, just be glad and be grateful because it, it is an opportunity for you to learn even more than others. And it is an opportunity to you know, flex, right? So have that kind of mindset, have that kind of attitude. And of course, we know that not everybody uh, is at the current, is at the same stage of development in terms of their mathematical abilities. So sometimes the project that I give you, some of you, you know, understand it way faster than others. So it is quite natural. So if you have understood your mathematics better than your friends, you may find yourself having to do more. And if that's the case, I hope you don't feel that there is some kind of unfairness. Look, it, it could be true that it is not fair that you are doing more, but in the end, you and your friends get the same marks, okay, when it comes to um, trying to give you a grade. Uh, let me know later, right? So, so of course, you got to let me know, right? Uh, because I will, of course, assess the situation, let your teachers know. But the thing is this, carry your friends, right? Carry. And uh, because if you decide that just because others are not pulling their weight and not playing their part, and you decided not to give your own 100%, it will just end up as a lose-lose situation. And we know we are always trying to go for a win-win whenever possible. So at least try to win on your part first. And that is the attitude I want you to have. Okay? 
Now, next, and it's related negatively, is complaining. Don't complain. Okay, so never had complaining ever solve any problem in the most positive ways. It just makes the day miserable for everyone involved. So sometimes you may feel unhappy and uh, you know, others are not doing their part and you feel that you need to vent this frustration and you complain. What I want you to do is to check yourself, check your emotions. Why? <coughs> is it fair when people are not doing the same amount of work? Of course it is not. And if your intention is to help other people to you know, change their ways maybe, to improve, to keep up, then you can give constructive feedback. What is the difference? Constructive feedback comes about because of a strong desire to want the situation and the issue to be resolved and to improve. Complaining happens because of frustration, because of anger. And there is a very big difference. Although the actions that you take sometimes may on the surface look the same, it impacts very differently. Okay, so this is my tip for you. If when you feel something is wrong, something needs to change, don't complain. Check your emotions. Make sure that your desire to say out, to speak out, okay, to let the teachers know even about some situation in your group is because you want your group to improve and not because you need to vent frustration. That allows you to have a very clear, rational mind and understanding and so that the things that you say will be you know, more rational and it will make sense and we can work on resolving the situation. Sometimes that happens when people complain. Too much emotion get involved, people get defensive, things does not improve, it becomes worse and everyone feels miserable. And I really don't want that in my class, right? Because you will have group work. So learn to embrace each other, think about win-win all the time, all right? So that's the second point I like to make. The third point is about habit. So here's the scenario, right? So if you have student A and student B, both at the beginning of the year set a goal, set a target. I want to get A1 for my mathematics. Whew. Good. We all know that it's important to set goals because without setting goals, we don't know how to continue the process and to progress. So goals are important, but I will argue that it is not the most important. Okay, so I continue. Huh? So you realize why is it that sometimes student A and student B both set the same goal, but student A is successful and student B is not. I will say it's because student A has better habits. So good habits is important. What kind of good habits am I talking about? Give you another example. For example, somebody New Year, they set a New Year resolution. I want to lose weight. <laughs> I want to go to the gym and exercise every day. So at the very beginning, you will feel very motivated and you will go. But a large percentage of people, when they make this kind of uh, New Year resolution, after a while, the motivation dies off. You no, know, they become busy, work become more and more hectic they stop. So there's a saying that we say is actually motivation is important, but more important is actually the discipline, the self-discipline to continue to persevere. The same thing with learning mathematics. Everyone wants to do well. Nobody starts saying that I don't want to do well. But over time, if you are not finding success, sometimes I understand that you, know, you get demotivated and some of you feel like giving up. Now, the thing is this, okay? How to make sure that you continue to actually try and try to improve your maths and not give up? It is by forming good habits, right? Forming good habits right from the very beginning. So what kind of good habits, you know, set, you've got to decide for yourself. Like, for example, you decide that um, I'm going to make sure I finish all my homework. Something like this, right? Because I know sometimes uh, some of you are very involved in other uh, co-curricular activities, lots of events out there. 
and sometimes you do not have the time but if you set the discipline no matter what i'm going to do it it will help a lot right or some of you may set the habit says okay every weekend i will review all the lessons that i have over the week and you keep to it no matter what make it into a habit and just by having this kind of system even though sometimes you don't have the motivation you're feeling down you're feeling tired you force yourself to go through one or two sessions of this notes reviewing uh reviewing may not be super efficient but because you persevere you will find that at the end of the day your grades will improve huh? and talking about homework huh? of course learning mathematics you know that sometimes you 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 get homework try to keep to the schedule uh, it is not only for your own learning sake i mean as a teacher from the teacher's point of view chasing after homework of students who are stubbornly refusing to be on time they i mean sometimes one off two off because of certain circumstances we understand but if you make it into a bad habit not only does it you know zap the energy of the teacher okay you know the teacher because of that very difficult to adjust the pacing of learning for the whole class you are indirectly sabotaging the entire class so you may think that you only affect yourself but actually your entire class gets affected just because you did not keep to the schedule right so keep to the schedule make it a habit even if you find difficult you do not know how to complete your work struggle through if you need to seek help to complete your work you seek help to complete your work don't delay don't procrastinate on this fact because you will indirectly hurt your classmates learning progress and let's not be that kind of selfish people all right i'm, I'm, I'm serious about it let's try i know that sometimes it happens but let's not make this into a bad habit ever okay right the next point half-hearted yeah um uh, I, I shared this with my form class at the first day of school you know when you raise your hand go all the way up right let's not do things half-heartedly i think there's this saying that says uh, uh if you know something is good uh, it's worth doing it badly <laughs> that's not to say that you purposely do it badly but because something is good uh, you still you still do it you know and, and and there's this saying that i also like a lion uh, uses all his might 100 percent whether it's attacking a giant beast uh, or trapping a tiny ant so same thing with our mindset when it comes to learning and trying to improve ourselves when we go all in we go all in we make up our mind we want to do well we want to grow we want to improve you let's not be half-hearted let's give it our all right and of course in mathematics um we say we give 100 <laughs> percent. you know those people who say i give 110 percent, 120 percent we know what they mean uh, but you know from a mathematics point of view it doesn't make sense right give your 100 percent. no half-heartedness like a lion be a lion all right okay next one netty now this word is uh i understand uh, less common okay but if you look up the dictionary you will find, you will understand what it means right so i say here try to look netty all the time right if we try to project po positivity our environment responds to us in kind so always be 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 properly grouped okay always um you know uh, try to project positivity now what this also entails is this right um our handwriting <laughs> now it, it is not because i'm looking at your scripts all the time and bad handwriting tortures me but the fact that we make an effort to give our best handwriting is also sending a signal that i want to be positive because if you are not positive about something you cannot actually try to make it look, look good it is it, our environment and ourselves actually influence each other that's why we also always encourage you know make sure your desk is clean make sure the classroom duty is done the classroom is nice and conducive right so it is the same thing now if you are writing a love letter to your crush ladies and gentlemen i'm sure you will give your best handwriting and if the handwriting looks nice and cute straight away when you open up the letter hmm, 
Uh, I'm giving you an example, right? So, so of course, it applies and transfer to all other aspects of our life, right? If you want to you know, submit a piece of work, we format everything nicely, all the formatting is good. It creates, it creates the kind of environment that my work, my assignment. Sometimes we teacher, we say, this student show pride. It reflects. And when you force yourself to do it, sometimes we think that it's a cause and effect thing. We think that only people who love mathematics make the effort to write mathematics solution neatly. Not, not, but then actually it's the other way around. Sometimes when you force yourself to write neatly, you will fall in love with your work. Another saying I also love is this. You see, sometimes we say because we are happy, we smile. Actually, sometimes we smile, then we become happy. We could be feeling quite uh, down, but we smile at you. We smile at one another. I mean, okay, look at your friend. You smile, your, your, your friend smile back. It generates a kind of energy that, you know, the, the, the chemical reaction that hey, actually is not bad, that bad. And you feel happier. So sometimes a smile is the cause of happiness. It's not just an effect. Same thing with good, neat, proper working or oh, handwriting. Sometimes trying to give a good, neat piece of work is a re is the cause to make you like that subject. Instead of you liking a subject, then you write neatly. All right. So that's what I mean here. Okay, next point. Nuisance. <laughs> Don't be a nuisance. Behaviors which block others from learning is just bad karma for your future. Okay. So yeah, sometimes you know, when we are in class having lesson, try to control any kind of behavior that obstruct learning. I mean, teachers are human. Sometimes you, you try to distract the, the, the teacher. It happens, right? And it, it obstruct the learning progress of your classmates. I believe in karma. <laughs> okay, so you are planting this little seed of negativity in your life. When, of course, it's not to say that during lesson time, you absolutely cannot say anything. Of course you can, right? But whatever you say, should try to contribute to the lesson and not just to disrupt. There's a difference, right? Earlier, I mentioned complaining and constructive feedback on the surface look the same, but they are different. In class, sometimes giving a comment um, can be positive. Sometimes it's negative. It comes from whether for inside you want to contribute to the discussion or whether you just want to you know, vent again, vent some frustration because you don't understand what's going on or, or, or you, you, you just want to you know, bring attention to something else, some inadequacy, some frustration in your heart, some loneliness, I don't know. But if there, you have this kind of negativity inside you, try to resolve it, okay? Outside lesson time, if you need to discuss it with someone, if you have a doubt, do it, resolve this, okay? Don't bring it to the classroom and don't hurt your classmates, okay? Uh, next point, gratitude, right? Gratitude, of course, is important. Uh, um, you, we, we have to be constantly aware that you know, we get to learn in this nice little environment because of the efforts of many others. You know? Your parents you know, working very hard to make sure you can attend class like this. You have the best equipment, the tools, the technology to actually learn. And then, of course, you have... Uh, you no know, teachers will prepare lessons and think about how to motivate you to study harder and to upgrade yourself. You have, you have good friends who also you know, mutually encourage each other. That helps, right? So always be grateful. And I feel, I always believe that being grateful is what makes you human. In fact, um, I've been educated when I was your age. I have very good seniors. I have very good people who offer me guidance to constantly think about how to be grateful all the time. Even the clothes that we wear, you know, the material, the cotton, the farmers who build the cotton, the seamstress, the, the logistic people who actually you know, um, transport the, the clothes to, 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 the, to the warehouse and to the shopping mall. All these are effort. Sometimes people sweat over it, they work hard over it. Um, you, may think, you may say that you know, they are compensated 
for it but still it is effort and when we constantly think about the clothes we wear the food that we eat the 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 our canteen vendors when we eat the food um no grateful for their service to constantly be very grateful to others effort so that i can live a relatively um healthy relatively um comfortable existence i think it is it is very enriching uh, so it, when we come to class every day it, it takes away all the negative energy from you and you try to really be in that moment learn as much as you can grow as much as you can and because we are grateful we will eventually want to contribute and that makes us a good human being you no know, contribute back right finally the last point i want to talk about is grudging uh, grudging so what does it mean well if i ask you to pick up the litter right some rubbish on the floor just pick it up okay have the awareness that some, no I, I i i don't really care who throw the litter but because i do care that we have a nice environment to live in a nice environment to learn right so just just get it done right no one is pinpointing you don't have to be defensive don't have to be so sensitive about all these things all the time sometimes we just want to you know there's things that needs to be done a little on the floor it needs to be thrown away just throw it away right don't have to go and figure out who's that whose fault is this and then after that you know look down at and, 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 and degrade the person who threw the litter and no, no 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 need for any of that right now the same thing with assignment right when i give you assignment the homework just get it done teachers don't give you homework and assignment uh, to make your life miserable okay sometimes you feel that way not true okay we give it to you because we want you to have that practice so that you internalize the lesson and then you improve from there right so just get it done okay same thing right just like i mentioned if your homework delay you are also indirectly hurting your classmates so just get it done right in your in the best way that you can don't be half-hearted uh, don't be half-hearted give it your all be like a lion okay be no netty yeah give it your best handwriting as well right take pride in your work okay so uh with that uh let me move on to the next segment uh some of the things that uh, i would like you to have during your lesson first a learning device uh yeah you are aware of what that is now sometimes i will have videos like this for you to watch right some of the lessons i actually pre-recorded as well to guide you through so that you can actually re-watch it if you need to to so that you you can know at your own pace because we know that uh everyone learn at a different pace so some some of you may need to watch a video more times some of you just watch it once will be fine so if you have to watch it uh the video in class okay have your earpiece right because we don't want uh, the audio from your learning device to be disturbing your neighbors okay so so that will be good to have as well uh stationaries please okay have your own stationaries now you, you you need you need a couple of things okay geometrical set in mathematics in your syllabus we will be using geometrical set so uh if we don't need it for a particular chapter it should be in your lockers right and if you need it it is with you you can actually retrieve it from your locker straight away so your geometrical set will include things like your compass your your protractor okay and uh, set squares and so on have all these things ready at all times okay next uh yeah ruler right we do draw diagrams uh, quite a bit in mathematics so having a ruler will, will make things a lot neater huh so yeah you know the chinese for ruler is called shi. Uh, sometimes no uh, like heartedly i would say people who don't use their ruler they are uchi. <laughs> don't fall into that group huh? have a ruler with you uh, you need pens okay of all colors okay uh, mainly you have your black pen or your dark blue pen for regular writing green pen for corrections or red pen because sometimes you need to mark a certain work right so have these uh different colors right uh, pencil uh, for diagrams you'll be using pencil so have pencils with you and of course very important for all mathematics students you need calculators uh, i mean have your own calculators especially now uh, we really discourage sharing of stationaries so don't have one calculator and have a whole group of you sharing a single calculator have your own right you know that every student need at least one okay uh of course uh, throughout the year i'll be giving you handout and worksheets so if you are using them for that lesson please have them with you 
we have textbooks sometimes practice questions come from the textbook so have your textbook with you and have a ring form okay so you can recycle those that you use from last year okay have a, have a ring file to actually keep all your handout and worksheets properly uh, let's be more organized as well do your very best to be organized so that when it's time to you know take out everything again to do a thorough revision for the examination you have all the things with you okay let's be as organized as we can okay uh next segment i would like to talk about eight big ideas again this is not new to to many of you right so what are these big ideas we are talking about big ideas of mathematics right so now earlier i talked about the mindset that i wish you to have when we approach learning so this next segment uh, we are going more into mathematics so in mathematics in your syllabus uh, we, we actually identified eight big ideas in the various parts of the syllabus so with this in mind you, you, you should be able to see there's a lot of connectivity between chapters to chapters and that help us to deepen our understanding and our learning of the subject okay so it's good to be aware of these big, eight big ideas so what are these eight big ideas uh, namely their functions invariance notation diagrams measures equivalence proportionality and models so let's take a look at each of this one and uh, have a re refresher of what uh, they each of them mean right so the first one is function now a function is a relationship between two set of objects that expresses how an element um, okay first set okay uniquely determines or relate to an element from the second set the output uh, so uh, what do we have here um, we have for example the two sets of objects they could be numbers right so from one number to the next number what do we do so in the diagram you can see i just have an example we have y equals to 3x plus 7 so we have a set of numbers x which we are going to treat it as an input to a machine okay you can imagine it that way and in that machine there's a rule it says multiply whatever you give me by 3 then add 7 to it then there's an output so whenever you have this kind of relationship from a from an input to an output we, we are we are quite a function and there are many functions in, in mathematics we we talk about the trigonometry we have our sine cosine tangent function we have our, our log, logarithmic functions and, and etc and many many more right even your formulas and this equation they are functions right uh, the next point is uh, invariance okay invariance actually refers to a mathematical object that remains unchanged okay when it undergoes some kind of transformation <clears throat> so for example uh, on the on the screen i have for you here we a, a simple a geometrical property such as the sum of interior angles is a triangle is 180 now degrees these are things that will change no matter how i adjust my triangles i have triangles with larger angle obtuse angle some length is longer some length is shorter no matter how the triangle transform okay that sum of interior angles doesn't change so when we have a certain property like that that is constant throughout okay uh, we say that there's a form of invariance and yeah you can see it applies in this case so it applies in many aspects of mathematics as well right next one is notation uh, notation simply uh, means that we use a certain symbol to represent mathematical object and it is universal most of the time we talk about conventions that means it is a set of rules on how to use all this notation so that uh, you know, uh, people who, academics and people who study engineers and what have you all over the world all the students in all the universities in the world all have this understanding and they use the same notation to represent the same thing and to write it in a concise manner right for example you know we have uh, we, we 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 use uh, the symbol pi right you know the symbol pi uh, it actually represent you know a, a number but if we do not have this symbol to represent that number right we know that actually pi is a number that when you write it down <laughs> you're going to lot, uh, need a lot of paper because the digits just go on forever so it helps us to make things uh, more concise right and precisely that value is pi so that's just an example for you okay uh, diagrams of course uh, we know that in mathematics lots of diagrams 
So here, just to um, break it down for you, there are two main categories of diagrams uh, that we're looking at, uh, geometrical diagrams and statistical diagrams. Now, geometrical diagrams actually represent and communicate the shape and size of objects to help us solve problems, right? For example, I want to look at the um, area, okay, the, the surface area of a, of a ball, right? Or football, right? So I have a football, uh, but of course a football, we know that it has uh, stitches, it has bumps and so on. So um, to really calculate the exact area is not that easy. But if we can represent it as a sphere, right? And we know that there's a formula to calculate the surface area of the sphere. If we can actually model the football with a sphere, we get a very good estimate of the actual area of the football. Okay. Or for example, a can drink, right? A can, a, a can, a typical shape of can is a cylinder. But you know that sometimes there are folds and then the top there are, you know, little, little, Bumps. It is not a pure cylinder, but we can model the cylinder to give us a good representation, good enough in a calcul to to cal do calculations and to uh, plan for things like how big our boxes need to be where we want to pack these cylindrical can drinks inside and so on and so forth. So to solve problems like that, right? So this is a geometrical diagram. Uh, so there are there are conventions for constructing and interpreting diagrams. So when we draw a diagram, um, we have vertices. How do we label them? If we talk about parallel lines, how do we label parallel lines? How do we label equilateral triangles? There are some conventions that we need to learn. Okay. Now the next type of diagram is statistical diagrams. Statistical diagram represent data. Okay, so you have heard of things like bar chart, pie chart. How do we use them? And also, you know, things like drawing graph on a graph paper, right? Your quadrilateral graph, your straight line graph. There are also certain conventions. How do we label the axis? How do we label the points? Right? How do we label the scales? So these are things that we try to follow, right? When we when we do a statistical diagram. Uh, so these are the diagrams that we actually use a lot in mathematics, right? Now measures, uh, as the word um, means, it is really to measure quantity. In mathematics, we want to be able to measure things, and there are many things that we measure, right? So um, for example, just take a quick look at the SI units, we will realize that hey, there are generally seven main category or primary category of things we could measure. And then there are derived units which tell us that there are secondary things that we measure. So there are so many things that we measure in mathematics. Okay, so down here on your screen, we have a couple of examples. We measure time, we measure temperature, measure mass, we measure the, 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 the volume. So we measure them in many different ways and all these uh, are also part of mathematics and then there's the idea of uh, equivalence right so equivalence um, what what it means here is uh, you know to write to represent a mathematical object okay in a different form okay well my screen got cut off over here well it's all right i will clean it up uh, and then share the slides with you again so um, what happened is, for example, we, we want to represent half. Okay, you can see on the diagram, okay, half a circle, it actually, you know, for example, half a circle, we have that, we have uh, two sets of semicircles there. Okay, that is half, right? And on the right side, we have two quarters. That means we divide the circle into four parts, two of it, right? So if we look at it, we see that, oh, the area are the same. So we write down half equals to two quarters. They are representing different realities. But because their value is the same, we say that they are equivalent, right? So at the bottom, the, we got cut off. I have a algebraic uh, expression over it. Sorry, an algebraic identity over there. Equivalence, right? 6x plus 8. I can write it in this factorized form. You'll get 2 times, then 3x plus 4. They are expressing the same okay, uh, mathematical object in two different ways. So that's equivalence. Proportionality, okay, as the word suggests, proportion. So if we have a scenario where uh, every table in a certain restaurant has four chairs uh, fixed, okay, so we know that uh, it, mathematically we can tell how many chairs we have if we know how many tables we have because of the, the property that they are proportion, right? Proportionality. So there's a constant multiplier uh, in, in that sense. So many things is uh, we talk about proportionality, it 
it involve things like ratio, involve uh, things like uh, um, you know, even fractions, uh, scales and maps, or scales and maps and so on, percentages, lots of things uh, actually is a uh, has a proportionality properties in there so we study it right and finally we have model so we take sometimes you no know, real world object okay we model it in a mathematical form so that we can go about solving problems right so earlier geometrical figure i've already mentioned sometimes we want to measure volume or or area of a certain real world object uh we, we estimate it with a geometrical um, model right uh, sometimes we use an equation to model um, a motion, a movement, or, or some phenomena. And of course, we use graphs and diagrams to model things quite a lot. So these are the eight big ideas of uh, uh, the mathematics that we are going to investigate. It will be pervade, um, pervasive all over your syllabus. You will see these eight big ideas. Good to have an awareness of them. And definitely, we will um, talk about them um, as we go along the year. Right? So, uh, just to test our understanding of the big ideas, just a simple, simple game, <laughs> okay, to, to keep us on our toes. I'm sure you, some of you are familiar with this, where, you know, I give you four pictures over here, and we think of one word that actually relates all these four, right? So, for example, this one, uh, we have a, a part of a thermometer, then we have on the top right, a, a protractor and a compass, Bottom left, some students graduating, and on the bottom right, we have a compass to tell us direction, right? So, so what what is common? You got that? Well, degree, right? So all of them involves the word degree because you know the temperature we measure in degree Celsius. Or, or, or on the right, we, we measure angle in degree. On the bottom left, you graduate with a degree, and when when you're looking at direction on the compass, we also talk about degrees. Okay. So ready, let's have some fun. Uh, you can do it on your own. Okay. Uh, if you need to pause the video, you may. Okay, so here we go. So here we have one. What do you think is common? Got that? I'll leave it on this screen for a little while more. Okay, maybe you can write your answer on a piece of paper if you want to. And then we have this situation. How about this one? We have some fractions on the top left, some uh, equations on the top right, some handwritten stuff on the bottom left, and on the right, some, some words, right? So what are they? Huh? Okay. And one more. Some numbers, pi is there. Matrix, okay. Uh, it's also there on the top right. On the bottom left, you have inequality and you have uh, set notation. And on the bottom right, we have some uh, standard form and also uh, indices. And the fourth one. Okay, so on the top left, uh, that is uh, probabilities. Okay, also for our mathematics. Top right, you have uh, some calculation, right? We are measuring tape. Volume of water, bottom left. And then uh, angle on the bottom right. So, if you have answers, let's take a look. If you see if you got it right. The first one, okay, remember this? What is common? Diagrams, right? So we have, uh, you know, uh, statistical diagram here, geometrical diagram, okay, statistical diagram on the top right, sorry, top left, bottom right, geometrical diagram on the top right, bottom left, they're all there, right? So diagrams. So again, recap, diagrams are visual representation of real world or mathematical objects. It serves to communicate certain properties of these objects and it facilitates problem solving. Yeah. How about this one? Okay, let's see if you got it right. Equivalence. Got it? So on the top left, we have uh, you know, the same value of a fraction written in uh, different forms, right? Different numerator, different denominator, but they all have the same value. On the top right, we have uh, an expanded form, 2x squared minus 5 minus 3 equals to 0. If we factorize the left-hand side, you get the second line. They are equivalents, right? Same, same statement written in different form. One is in the expanded form, one is in the 
factorized form. On the bottom left, same thing, we have a situation where we try to add up two fractions or write it together as a single fraction. And on the uh, bottom right, okay, we have uh, two statements. Okay, two angles in one triangle is equal to the two corresponding angles of the other triangle. Or it it, we are simply describing a situation where two triangles are similar. Okay. So equivalence is a relationship that expresses equality of uh, two mathematical objects. Okay, the objects may be represented in different forms, right? Okay. Right, this one. This one should be easy. Yep, it's notation, right? So yeah, using different ways to represent things. We represent numbers on the top left, represent some matrix or some operations on the top right, inequalities on the bottom left, and so on and so forth. So notations are making use of symbols to represent mathematical objects, operations, and relationship in a concise and precise manner, right? A writing system also, okay? So we use the writing system that we use now, right? So of course, in different cultures in the past, they used to write numbers in many different ways, right? So now we have a convention. You know, it facilitates communication and the exchange of mathematical ideas. And this one. You got that? So a hint, we are measuring the length, we are measuring the angle. There we go, measures. So we are measuring different objects here. So numbers are used as measures, right, to quantify real world mathematical objects, allow properties of uh, objects to be analyzed, compared and ordered. So that's what we do in, in measuring. So I hope uh, with this session, okay, just a recap, we started out by me sharing uh, the mindset I wish you to have uh, as we approach on this journey of learning mathematics this year. And then after that, some of the things that you need to have with you so that we got a good smooth uh, lesson, all your stationaries especially, make sure you have them, as well as uh, the APIC ideas is a recap for many of you to actually remember that you not know, the syllabus these are the, some of the big ideas behind it that we can identify, right? So big ideas in mathematics, uh, let's do a summary. Big ideas expresses ideas that are central to mathematics, yes, okay? They bring coherence and connect ideas from different strands, right? Different topics, they are actually connected because of these big ideas and levels, right? So understanding the big ideas bring one closer to appreciate the nature of mathematics. Aha, uh -huh. so here comes the question. What is the nature of mathematics? So this is your first assignment. I would like you to answer this question. What is mathematics to you? Because interestingly, after a while, although learning mathematics for many years, some students are unable to describe what mathematics is. For example, we know that uh, geography is the study of the earth, job is earth, right? Uh, we know history is to study the, the things that happens in the past and to learn from them. We know physics is to study the physical world, bio to study the biology, the biology of, of creatures and objects and living things. We, we chemistry is to study the chemical um, um, and its relationship with one another. But mathematics, it is not just numbers. You, you, you started with numbers in preschool and nursery, but you realize it's no longer just that. <coughs> How about the eight big ideas? Is it the eight big ideas? Are there more ideas out there? Okay, so this is the first assignment I have for you. Tell me, what is mathematics to you, right? So you will complete this by the end of this lesson. And um, well, all the best. Have a nice day.